Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, today is Monday. This is a new week and God has something special that he is doing in your life. Praise God. And, and, and I've got a lot that I'm going to be sharing with you from the word of the Lord this week. And as you follow and listen, you will be blessed God is going to energize your spirit that you will fulfill his word. Praise God. You know how we do it on this broadcast before we go on? Can we make demand for our daily bread? It's your right. Jesus said, ask for it. And when you ask, you shall be given. Praise God. So are you ready to make demands for your daily bread? Join me in faith right now. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. This thing, receive it. Just know that a miracle is going to happen today. That's what God has planned for you. Praise God. Now turn your Bibles with me to our main text scripture, Ephesians chapter 2, the book of Ephesians. Brother, Paul wrote this message or letter to the brethren in Ephesus. And he was communicating God's word to them as God laid it in his heart. Now verse 10, Ephesians chapter 2 says, For we are his workmanship. Praise God. I love this. We are his product. We are his handiwork. Watch this now. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. Now, take note of something here. He says, you were created in Christ Jesus. And the purpose for your creation is for good works, not bad works, not any works, good works. And then he says, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now this, this scripture tells a lot of story about the, the, the work of God, the creation of God and, and the life that we live. Just this verse of scripture. Now, you see, that's the thing with a lot of, a lot of times. We, don't, we just read things and just browse through. You don't sit down to break down. But that's why the Holy Spirit has been given to us. It's the Holy Spirit that will tell you, slow down, slow down, read that again. And then you read it again. Lord, what, what's here for me? And then he begins to break it down and break it down and break it down. Remember, Jesus said, he will teach you all things. You've heard me share on this broadcast about the difference between a Bible teacher and a word teacher. They are not the same. A Bible teacher will carry the Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic, everything, and try to find the meaning. But a word teacher will tell you the mind of God, and then he will point out to different places where God was saying the same thing. That's a, a word teacher. And it will take the Holy Spirit to be a word teacher. You may not need the Holy Spirit. It's a benefit if you have the Holy Spirit to be a Bible teacher. But you may not need the Holy Spirit to be a Bible teacher. I need you to understand that. All you need is your intelligence and, and your ability to read. See, you read, you intelligently put things together, and then you find people do, you know, all those things they call exigence. All those things they, um, uh, what, what, what all those things they call them again? You know, referencing and all those things. Now, you don't need, they, don't, they didn't get those things from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit never came and said, this is a, a Bible exigence. No. It's people that gave them those names. It is scholars that say, okay, this pattern of referencing scriptures is called this. It, it's such an amazing thing. See, how uh, preachers will not depend on the Holy Spirit. They will depend on another man. See, and they will tell you, you are wrong. Why, why am I wrong? Because another man said something. And so why do you believe that man and you don't believe me? See, that's the, the confusion a lot of people have. And it's sad. 
it's sad recently i i saw an argument um on social media it caught my attention and i saw different preachers debating when joshua spoke to the son and he says son stand still and the bible said the son stood still now i hear different preachers say joshua did not tell the son to stand still it was the earth he told to stand still and i i thought about it and like what kind of funny argument is this now why do they say that because scientists have come to tell us that the sun does not move so if the sun does not move it's the earth that rotates you know um, around the its axis okay and then so the earth rotates and that's why you have day and night the sun is in one place okay that's what scientists have told us so they said if the earth if the sun does not move then it's wrong for joseph to have said the sun should stand still now you see the holy spirit help me here <laughs> is god it's funny you know why it's funny now you begin to argue the bible remember what i said about the bible the bible is a compendium of testimonies of people who received the word of god what they did with it and how they ended with it the bible recorded that joshua said son stand still the bible also recorded that the son stood still now you are not coming to say no the actual hebrew aramaic statement he made there was earth not son no you're not saying that you are saying you know what you're doing you know what those people are doing they are saying by the saying of science today let us change the testimony of the bible that's what they are saying hey, but, but Pastor Tupo, actually the, the the sun does not move so you cannot say sun stands still the bible recorded what the man said the bible was not telling us whether the sun is moving or the earth is moving the man looked up and said son stay where you are and the record of the scriptures is that the sun stood still now what's the deal there brothers and sisters is it not funny the kind of things we argue over what's the deal there no the the, the bible recorded that the sun stood still now whether in practical sense it is the earth that stood still that's a completely different thing so for you to come today and say it is wrong to say son stand still you're making a fool of yourself you know why because there are many things you still don't understand the same way when people come and say eh, is, is jesus is not his name his name is yeshua you know or his name is there is there is a hidden name that he have that is his real name jesus is not the real name brothers and sisters we pray in the name of jesus and we see results we lay hands on the sick in the name of jesus we see results we cast out devil in the name of jesus we see results when we call the name of Je you don't come tell us so you how many demons have you cast with that original name it's the funny things that we get involved in, 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 in trying to argue. Senseless to me, honestly. They are senseless. But it, it's just a way of people showing that they are widely read or they have studied and that they have sense. But that will necessarily not change your life. It will only make you to be antagonistic. And that will not help you in any way. The Bible recorded that Joshua said, sun stand still. As at that time, there is no scientific uh, knowledge that the sun does not stand. If per adventure, if he knew that the sun doesn't move, he could have said, earth stand still. But he wanted something in his heart. And that's where I'm going to. He was wanted to communicate something from his heart. He needed this night not to fall until they finished this battle. And according to the understanding that he had, 
he commanded the sun to stand still. It's, it's for example, today, you know, you know, by faith, someone says, now, those of us in Nigeria will understand this. Someone said, Nepa, bring back the lights. Now, there is nobody that you will call Nepa, like a robot that goes and say, okay, I heard you, I brought back the lights. It is human beings that walk there. It's human beings that switch off the light. It's human beings that walk on the light and then do the reconnection. So someone comes and say, well, who show me who Nepa is. I don't know if you understand. But then someone by faith says, Nepa, bring back the light. And then the light is restored. Everybody rejoices. And someone shares the testimony and say, oh, do you know, we're just sitting down together. There was no light. Someone, you know, brother so-and-so just got upset and said, look, Nepa, bring back the light. And then the light, the, the light was restored. And someone begins to say, no, how can you say it's because of what he said? Because there is no, no, nobody called Nepa in today's Nigeria. There is no more Nepa. So... Are you getting what I'm saying? Someone was communicating the thoughts of his heart. However the word came out of his mouth is not your problem. And you can't counter his results. You can't say, oh, you, you couldn't have gotten that result because he didn't say it properly. You are not God. He wasn't speaking to you, oh God. He wasn't speaking to you. Leave men alone. They say this gospel. We we teach the gospel. I, I was trying to tell you the very day, what teacher, the Bible teacher. That's the, all the confusion a Bible teacher can bring. A what teacher tells you the mind of God. And he brings you to the place of understanding. A Bible teacher will set confusion in your mind. Yes. So, because he doesn't use the Holy Spirit. Now, now, one who has the Holy Spirit can try to use the Holy Spirit to be a Bible teacher. And he can still get into error. But a word teacher is disciplined to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit because he's not saying what he knows. He's saying what is given to him by the Spirit of God. So all a word teacher needs to do is to keep himself in the presence and the love of God. And God will make sure he doesn't walk in a lie. God will make sure he walks in the path of truth. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. So, here yeah, then, he says, we are his workmanship. So, he created us. And he created us in Christ Jesus. Now, that's significant. We were created in Christ Jesus. He's talking about when we got born again. And then he said, the reason he created us in Christ Jesus is for good works. Mm. These good works is not just you waking up and saying, I want to do good work. He says, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So before you were created in Christ Jesus, there, was, there were good works that God had prepared ahead of time. And he had planned that when you were created in Christ Jesus, you will step in by the leading of the Holy Spirit to carry out those good works. So it's not every work you do that is recorded as good works. No matter how good and how sincere th that work looks, if it is not what has been ordained for you to carry out, it is not good works. You remember Jesus made a statement. Please take note of this. Jesus said, on that day, many will come in my, many will come to me and said, sir or master, didn't we cast out demons in your name? And by your name, we did many mighty works. And Jesus said, I will say to them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Take notes. Jesus said, I will tell them you are workers of iniquity. Now, it is natural for you to just think when he said workers of iniquity, he's talking about, oh, these are the ones that were fornicating. These are the ones that were stealing church money. These are No, sir. No. To work iniquity. Kalibarata sayena mahakata. To work iniquity. Some of you are getting it already. 
To walk in iniquity is to do a work that was not preordained for you. Ah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. To be a worker of iniquity is to do a work that was not ordained for you. Why is it called iniquity? Why did Jesus call them workers of iniquity? I'll tell you. If God had preordained that Mr. A is ordained to lift this table from this place to that place, that is the good work that God had preordained for Mr. A. Now Mr. B comes and feels he's too macho. He looks around, he's looking for everything to do. And then he comes and says, hey, oh, look, look, I'll move this table. And then he, he moves this table. Do you know he has worked iniquity? But Pastor, so what, is that not helping Mr. A already doing his work? No, you see the problem. The problem is Mr. A, being led of the Holy Ghost, will come to that place. There is a good work for Mr. A to do, which was to leave this table, but the table is no longer there. So what happens? Mr. A gets into a place of confusion and he gets into a place of misdirection. He's, he doesn't know now. He, he, now, now, let me, let me, let me give you a story, a testimony. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, how do I put this now? <laughs> it's God. Okay. There is this lady. She's a Muslim. Or, let me put it this way. There is this lady, a child of God, born again. She received some money and she took out her tithe. And she began to pray to the Lord. Okay? And asking the Lord, what do I do with your money? Because that's what we do with tithe. It's God's money. So you ask the Lord, what do I do with this money? And then the Lord spoke to her. I said, give the tithe to that Muslim lady. And she went, why? Ah, no, no, no. How can I give my tithe to a Muslim? And, but any time she, the Lord brings it to her remembrance. And this took days. This took days. But any time she prays, the Lord reminds her. I told you to give that tithe to that lady. You've not obeyed me yet. And then she calls me and say, I don't understand. Uh, is it possible for God to tell you to give your tithe to a Muslim? I said, why not? All you need to do is to be sure that's what the Lord is saying. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, why? Because, see, <laughs> the fact that this person is a Muslim doesn't mean he's not a child of God. You think in your mind is when you get born again that you become a, a, a child of God. No, sir. No. It's because you're a child of God that you actually get born again. Jesus said, my sheep hears my voice. And remember, he told them in John chapter 10, he said, other sheep I have which are not of this fold, they also will hear my voice and I will bring them in. See? So it's not when you get born again that you become. Now, when you get born again, you, that is when you are actively adopted as a child of God. But before then, because your name is written in the book of life, you belong to God. So I explained all this to her. I said, so if you are convinced, not emotion, not you, did you hear? No, she said, I've not spoken to this person, but I know the person, but I've not spoken to this person in a, in a while. We've not, the person has not expressed any need to me. I said, then obey God. Now, remember, I said, this have taken several days, okay? And she finally obeyed the Lord and called this lady up and said, send me your account number. And she sent the money to her. She didn't have to say, I'm sending you my tithe. No, it's <laughs> got you tied to the Lord. Then when the Lord commands you what to do, it is you are like an errand boy or errand girl doing the Lord's work. So she sent the money to this person and he calls and he's weeping. He said, what is it? Oh, I have this family issue. I was left in the house and I've been living this way, but the, the rent of the house was due 
and what I needed to pay, the rent of the house was due some days ago. Now, I was told if I don't pay by this time, I will be kicked out of the house, something like story like that. And this money just came at the very right time. Now, what do you call that? Good work. Why is it good work? Not because she gave her tithe to a Muslim. No, because the Lord who blessed her had preordained a work for her where that lady is concerned. And when the time came, the Lord put money in her hands knowing that she's diligent with her tithe. And she took out the tithe like she has always done and went before the Lord. And the Lord says, give it to that person. Good work he had preordained for her to walk in. And she gave that person. Her obedience is now yielding to this plan of God. He created you in Christ Jesus to do those good works which God had preordained that you should walk in. And she used that to minister the love of God to that lady. And how, how, how will you doubt the love of God having experienced that? Can you see now? So, if someone else had without the leading of the Spirit of God, giving that lady money, if that lady had been going around begging and begging and begging and maybe out of begging gathers enough, and pays for that thing. Now, I've had experiences where people ask me money and I have the money I want to give, but I'll be restricted from giving. I had that experience with my dad one time. You know, my dad had called me and said, look, I need some money. I had the money, but every, several times I'll pick up my phone, I'll feel restricted. I'll feel restricted. So ah, I said, okay, let me wait and see. And then the day passed, Two days passed, three days passed. I didn't hear from my dad. So I'm like, okay. So I decided to call. I called and I said, say, oh, let me share a testimony with you. I said, what happened? He said, do you know that day I called you? I said, yeah. Do you know what happened that evening? So so and so person just decided to come and visit me. And they, they said God laid this in their heart to bring the exact amount of money. I say, oh, now I see why I was restricted. Why? Because you see, God had preordained for so. Now, to my dad, it was a testimony. But do you know what? If I had given him the money, and even though those people have come, he wouldn't have appreciated it the way he did. But that's good. So I had to be kept aside for those people to do the good work that God preordained for them. My time is up. Praise God. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. I'm, we're in for a great week. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.